In this tutorial, we'll go over menus, windows, and icons. Hello, and welcome to the first tutorial. Right now, we're going to go through the user interface. So when you open up the program, you will find at the top menu bar your user settings under settings. This should be your first stop in exploring the program. You have all of your options that have to do with your computer configuration, whether you're using a regular mouse or a tablet, style CAD, etc. Please select regular mouse. For following these tutorials, it's best to use a mouse, just like I'm using. You can define your um, panning and zooming at your discretion. However, there are three options, but please try to keep them at the default while following the tutorials. We will go into the more um, pertinent settings of your user interface. If you want to create short keys, that is possible. However, short keys are pretty much uh, similar to regular Windows short keys and regular um, Adobe short keys. So if you'd like to create your own, just make sure that you are creative because most of the short key options are taken. Right here, we're going to toggle our user menu to top and I will show you that once we exit. But for these tutorials, I am following the left version. Under your 2D settings and your user settings, I have my particle distance set at 15. I find this to be a little bit more easier to use, less open for your triangular mesh. Right now, I am just cycling through all of the other things for you to just get familiar with your user interface. You will see once we exit, my user interface will change and the menu bar will be at the top. You can um, make sure you uh, just read through the settings. Most of the time, you will want to keep it at default. However, if you want to just change the views to left or right, or if you want to change your um, default folders, you're also able to do that here in this menu. So let's get on with it. This is your settings menu. Get familiar with your settings. Make sure um, I keep this off. Save thumb thumbnails for four versions. I don't need four versions of my thumbnail. So one is great. Um, if you do need front side and back, left and right, then you can check that. I have an Alvanon um, user profile, which I, it, you have to use the permission file folder here. You can select that file and you will have your permissions embedded into your user settings. So whenever you download Alvanon forms, you can use it there. So let's go through, um, this is for your Clo set and this is for your Clo API. Clo API is pretty much for, um, Enterprise users, you will find that there are different scripts uh, available to enterprise users. So now this is what your window will look like when you open it. Right now they have a, a uh, default setting for grouping your menu items. The menu items are grouped. For a beginner, this is really hard to find. So please go back to your user settings and make sure you go to user interface and click group tools off. When your group tools are off, you will be able to see all of your, um, all of your menu items. This is another reason why I keep mine at the left. So I have as many options as I can have visible. There are still um, options in your uh, tools that are attached to them by a little arrow to the right hand side of the tool. You can see that there are other options for that tool, but the options are not grouped together. So sometimes your tools have, uh, your menu tools have options 
but if you want to turn off the group you can turn it off you'll see in your library window you can actually download updated content so there's a little download window indicated by blue a little blue dot will tell you if there are new items for that library content and you can go ahead and download that usually uh, things are released and you might not know it until you see that little blue icon so just continually monitor and update so now we're going to go into our phase two of getting to know the menu when you first open your program you will see your project name at the top of your 3d window right now we're looking at your menu you've already gone to settings but as you can see you have a lot of different menus that you can toggle with the arrow at the right hand side of the menu if you click on a side bar menu it will open up a new uh, a new folder for you so right now your default folder is your library but you can toggle that to the side of the screen so whichever folder you have selected the contents of that folder will show at the bottom of the menu window so as you can see the library you come with a default of a men's t-shirt and a woman's t-shirt if you want to go to your avatar folder your hanger folder your fabric folder all of the contents of that folder will show in at the bottom so if we click on avatar we can also see your avatar folders but you can download content there's your download button if you want to add a folder you can add a folder but this is up to your user preference if you want to collapse this folder it will collapse into a side menu so you can actually see from the top you have file which will have all of your file commands edit which will have all of your edit commands these are the same things that are usually found on a Windows program or an Adobe program 3d content actually the 3d content matches the tools that are found in your 3d window so as you can see these tools actually correlate to the tools in your 3d menu bar so I will show you with the um, 2d menu you will see if I click on one polygon rectangle ellipse this is actually matching your creation tool polygon rectangle ellipse you have a shortcut key as well H S and E so you can see that if I click on another if I click on another menu option in my 2d pattern window that same option will be checked and highlighted on the menu so let's just take a look at that because your 3d content and your 2d pattern content it is linked so if I click on trace it's checked but it's also highlighted this is how you can tell what mode you're in and what uh, options that are there for you to use so here is my grading and then my grading is highlighted if I go to my 3d content there's also a linking that goes on here so if I want to let's say I want to click on press or if I want to click on something else pin to avatar edit avatar so if I want to edit 3d garment or edit pin avatar you will see that it highlights so just know for every menu option you have an edit option so if you have a what I mean by that in your 3d window you can have a sewing tool but then you also have an edit sewing tool so if I'm clicking on my sewing it's the same for my 3d window and the same for my 2d window whichever sewing mode that I'm in so we're going to talk about sewing modes in a sewing video 
So for example, if I'm tacking on the avatar, which there it is in my 3D menu as well, there's nothing correlating on my 2D window because that is strictly a 3D function. But some things you can do in 2D and 3D and we will follow that at a later time. So right now, if I want to steam, that's different from pressing. Okay, pressing and steam are different. Sometimes people get confused by that, but pressing is a uh, 3D functionality. Steaming is found in your 2D functionality. And we will explore what those two things do later on in our tutorials. So all of your menu functions are linked with your 3D tools or your 2D tools and their options. So if I'm clicking on zipper, zipper will highlight. And it will be checked. Currently, there is no edit zipper in this version. I am using version 5.2. So if I want to edit a top stitch, it will highlight here, edit top stitch. So the same thing goes for each of your functionality that correspond with your library or with your 2D or 3D windows. So like I said, for every icon, there is an equal menu uh, option. So it depends on how you're used to working with icons or you're used to working with menu options. This is totally to the user's discretion. But these things are in your interface, so take some time to explore them. Um, right now, as you can see, there is a, a link for each operation that you can do in your 3D window. But there's also, if you see an arrow at the top left, just to clarify, whatever icon you hover over will give you options. You'll find that on your top left, if you have an arrow on your top left, that icon is a edit icon. If you have an arrow at the bottom right, that means that icon has further options. So what you can do is get familiar with your edit buttons and get familiar with your extended menu options for your icons. So at top left, arrow means this is an edit function for that group. Bottom right means you have further options that go along with that icon. So just make sure you get familiar with your edit functions and your extended options in your icons. We will be going through all of these options in separate videos so you can understand your functions. Your grading has two different options in your menu icons. There are pattern symbols. There are annotations. These all have to do with 2D pattern making measuring the patterns, grading the patterns, notching the patterns, adding seam allowance, tracing the patterns, etc. These are all flat pattern uh, detailed operations that you will need to learn for your 2D window in creating actual patterns for production or for your own personal use. These uh, 2D settings for sewing are also uh, found in the 3D menu. You can click on your bottom right and you will find you can switch the type of sewing that you want and um, you can measure it. The sewing stitching length. This is helpful in adding ease for your patterns, etc. Graphic options, graphic edit options can also be found in your 2D and 3D window. Stitching 
is strictly right now in the 3D window. Shows up on your pattern side, not your 3D side. Your 3D side, you'll be able to see your stitching in render view only. So in your 3D window, you also have functionalities that will show up in the actual 3D window. So they've put this list of menu icons in your 3D window. So you can explore the 2D and 3D window options. So these are options that are only showing changes in your 3D and 2D window. These have nothing to do with your functionality for creating patterns, but for viewing patterns and for viewing 3D, that's where you'd look. At your bottom window, you'll find that you have, once you've clicked on render, the render option window will stay open for you since you are in the render mode. Just please note that you have a stop and a play. When you hit play, that means you're rendering. It will start to save whatever image is in the render viewpoint. You also have icons here for viewing your render, viewing your lighting, your camera settings, and your actual options for render uh, quality. You also have your link to your cloud, which is also in your render menu, and you have your subset of menus icons at the bottom. This subset is for lighting only. So once you have your render window open, you will have a separate subset for your lighting to add lights or lighting properties. If you want to toggle on and off at the side, you have an arrow that will push your menu to a side menu bar. It's still there, you just have to click it back on. Most of the time you will have these two options open, meaning your object browser and your property editor. Those are the two that you will find you need when using the 2D window the most. If you need more real estate, if you're drafting the pattern and you need more real estate, you can go ahead and close them into the, you're not really closing them, but you're pushing them over into the uh, right hand side of your window. If you look at your option browser, you will see that there are two arrows to the left and to the right. That means your menus extend all the way uh, with those options. At the bottom right hand side, you can see that you can change your menu, your view, viewers options, meaning you can view both 2D and 3D. You can view 2D only and you can view 3D only. You can also refresh your views. There's a refresh button there. So if you are in your 2D window and you want to, um, you need to zoom in, you can actually create this window to be just the 3D window and you can pop out your options, browsers, your property editor and your object browser and you can size them accordingly. So sometimes we need to have a little bit more real estate when creating a pattern. Maybe you have many pattern pieces that you want to see simultaneously. And then you can just push them back with this little icon at the top right hand side. And that will put them back into your window. You can toggle them on. You can refresh at your bottom right hand side of your full window. So that covers most of the area, the real estate in your user interface. So we'll go over a recap right now. Thanks.